system is loaded. Well, after the operating system is loaded, there are drivers inside this motherboard ROM which can handle various components in the system. For example, in that motherboard ROM, there's a keyboard driver. There uh, is a basic hard disk driver. There's a floppy disk driver. There's a serial port driver, a parallel port driver. Now, these drivers are only used with 16-bit operating systems because the, the code in these drivers is actually 16-bit code. What that means is that if you're running Windows NT, Windows 2000, or Windows XP, see, those are completely 32-bit operating systems. They use no 16-bit code, no 16-bit drivers. So, in, in effect, while at a screen with X, you know, while at an XP desktop screen, none of these drivers are in effect. In most modern systems, in other words, the motherboard ROM functions only during the boot process. As the system is booting, loading Windows XP, for example, alternate keyboard drivers, hard disk drivers, and other drivers are loaded into RAM and executed. In fact, in a modern running PC, you have virtually no drivers in ROM. All of the drivers in your system are in RAM. What happens when you turn the power off? Well, of course, all, all the drivers in RAM vanish. What happens when you turn it on the next time? The same boot process occurs. So the drivers be stored somewhere other than in motherboard ROM and in the RAM. Well, what they are they're stored is on the hard disk. So we have drivers stored on the hard disk, which are loaded during the boot process into RAM where they execute. For, for, a, for a driver to run, it must be in memory. It must be either in ROM or RAM. RAM in order to be executable. So if we have a driver on a hard disk, and we say that driver is installed, to me that means something. A driver that's installed means that the driver is not just sitting on the hard disk, but it is configured, or the operating system is configured so that every time the system boots up, that driver is loaded from the hard disk to RAM. And it happens automatically. That's part of the boot process. The more different hardware components you have in your system, the more drivers Drivers are going to be loaded. Boot time is going to be a little bit longer because of that. More drivers being loaded. In fact, let's look at this another way. Wh where can drivers reside in your system? There are right now only three places that drivers can run in your system. And we see two of them right here. Drivers can be in the motherboard ROM. Most of your drivers are loaded into RAM. Of course, all the drivers that are loaded in RAM also reside in the hard disk, but they're not executable from the hard disk. So I don't say, I don't say that the drivers are on the hard disk because they can't run from the hard disk. They have to be loaded from the hard drive into, into RAM. What's the third location where you'll find drivers? Well, the third location will be adapter cards. For example, here I have a video card. Now, when you turn a P on, do you see video on the screen immediately? Well, usually a few seconds after you turn it on, yes, you do. How did that work? How did the drivers built to your motherboard ROM know how to operate this particular video card? What if you bought a different brand? Um, do they have hundreds of different drivers in there for hundreds of different brands of video cards that are on the market? Because they, they are all different, and they all do need different drivers. Well, no, that, was, that was gonna, would be impossible. There isn't enough space to fit drivers for the hundreds or thousands of different video cards that are on the market. So, Back in, in, in 1981-82, when IBM was you know, first designing the PC, when it first came out, they built in a routine into the motherboard ROM, which would scan all of the bus slots, all of the slots where you have cards put in, looking for ROMs on the card. This video card has a ROM chip on it right here. And this ROM chip contains the initial drivers for this video card. And those drivers are what allow you to see the power on self-test and the actual boot process taking place. Now, I had somebody uh, ask me once, well, if, if the drivers are in the ROM chip that's built into the video card, then wh why did I have to install additional drivers in Windows? Well, there's a limitation. The, the ROM chip that's built into a card like this, at, at least especially video cards, is limited to 32K kilobytes, K bytes in size. And there's just simply no way they could fit all of the drivers necessary to run this video card in a 32K space. So all we have here in the ROM are drivers to support X mode and the most basic VGA graphics mode. Now, if you've ever run Windows in what's called safe mode and you've looked at how crude the screen looks, that there's a very low resolution, usually 640 by 480 pixels uh, over and across, and also only 16 colors, that's because that's all that built-in ROM drivers supports.
You'll notice that when Windows starts up, you usually start off with a low resolution Windows logo screen and then it clears and high resolution desktop appears. Well, that is exactly the point when your video drivers were loaded from the hard disk into RAM to really operate the video card to its full potential. So, again, three sources for drivers in your system are three places where drivers reside in a running PC. Uh, number one, in the motherboard ROM. Number two, in, in RAM, there's a SIM or DIM memory module. And number three, uh, they can be in ROM chips and cards. Now, what kind of cards would have ROM-based drivers on them? All video cards do. That's pretty much a given. Other types of cards, um, SCSI adapters. That stands for Small Computer Systems Interface. Those are adapters used to run SCSI hard drives, CD-ROM drives, uh, et cetera. Um, your motherboard ROM does not know how to boot from a SCSI hard disk. So in order for that to, to take place, you plug in a SCSI adapter, and it has a ROM on it with the initial drivers to recognize that hard drive and allow booting from it. Another card that has a ROM on it is a network card. It's also possible to have a boot ROM on a network card. For example, I've seen PCs on a network that, where the PC has no hard disk, no floppy disk, no CD-ROM, in fact, no drives of any kind. You turn the PC on, it seems to load the operating system, and you can then load applications. How does that work? Well, the operating system in that case is being loaded off of a file server. Now, the thing is, no motherboard I'm, I'm aware of knows how to do that for every different type of network card and different file server that's out there. That's why each of the, it's, re, it's the responsibility of the card manager to provide that as an option on the card. So almost all of your modern network cards either have the ROM built in or that's an option. And we call that network boot ROM. Sometimes it's called an IPL for initial program load ROM. So I've just named uh, at least three different types of cards that have ROMs on them. Video cards all do. SCSI adapters, the better ones do, that allow support for bootable hard disks. And network cards, they typically do as an option, but most people don't really use the option. Most people still boot from their normal hard disk and then you know, log on to the file server and don't load the operating system off of the file server. So the boot ROM be present in your network card, but you're probably not taking advantage. All right, so we've covered the places for drivers to reside in your PC. We've talked about the difference between ROM and RAM. And we've talked about the different components that are in the motherboard ROM. You know, I left one thing out. In the motherboard ROM, there are four things, and we've only got three of them. What is the missing piece? Well, some of you are probably thinking about it already. It's the BIOS set program. That's the program that you use to configure the initial, you know, the settings in your piece, things like the hard drive settings, um, other basic motherboard configuration items, even things like the speed, the processor, and buses in the system are all configured in the BIOS setup. Now, the reason I skipped over it was actually intentional. When you normally turn a system on, you don't go into the BIOS setup every time you turn it on. You go from the post to the bootstrap loader, and then, if necessary, any of the other drivers in there will be running in the background while you're running your operating system. During the post, almost all systems allow you to hit a keystroke combination, either one key or a combination of keys, to jump into this BIOS setup. 